Congratulations, we have now graduated from three-sided figures to four-sided figures. The four-sided figures are called quadrilaterals. Quad meaning four. Think of a quad runner has four wheels. So a quadrilateral has four sides, exactly four sides. And once a figure has more than three sides, it can be either concave or convex. Well, what does that mean? Look at all these quadrilaterals. Some of them have little caves that we can hide in. That's what we mean by concave. And how do we determine if a quadrilateral is concave? Well, I pick a vertice. In this case, I'm going to choose this one right here. And then I draw lines to all the other vertices. So there's a vertice from this vertice to this vertice. And the minute I go outside the quadrilateral, it is no longer a, a normal quadrilateral. We call this little mouth area, if we put a little eye here, think of Pac-Man. Here is the cave. That's the cave part of it. So concave, okay? So it makes a cave. This line is not part of the quadrilateral. Okay, so if it's convex, as you can see here with my little pink lines, I chose this vertice to start at, and I drew a line to all the other vertices, and my lines either stayed inside or on the edge of the quadrilateral. The quadrilaterals that we're going to be talking about are the convex quadrilaterals. Those are the ones that we're going to be interested in from here on out. Okay, so let's start with a definition of a quadrilateral. If I am a quadrilateral, I have exactly four sides. The sum of my interior angles of all quadrilaterals is, hmm, I don't know. Let's try and figure it out. Well, we know that squares all have 90 degrees. So if I take 4 times 90, I get 360 degrees. Okay, a rectangle also has 90 degrees. So that would also be 360 degrees. But these guys aren't squares or rectangles. How do I know that they actually add up to 100 and 360 degrees? Well, here's what we do. We take a vertex and we draw a line to the others and I divide it into two triangles. Okay, so now I know that this angle plus this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees and this angle plus this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees and if I add 180 and 180 I get 360 degrees. Okay, so far so good. We are consistent. Can I make more than two triangles out of this one? Well, I go to one vertice I go across, now notice, I am always starting at the same vertice, and I'm looking to see, I'm going to all the other vertices, and all I make are two triangles. So therefore, that also adds up to 360 degrees. And this last diamond, I can do the same thing. If I go from this vertice to all the other vertices, I still only end up with two triangles. So two triangles of 180 degrees means that any four-sided figure is going to equal 360 degrees. Okay, so now let's note, I have exactly 
two properties for a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure. It has four sides and its interior angles add up to 360. Okay, do not assume any additional properties for a quadrilateral unless you have more information about it. I don't know anything else. If I know nothing else about a quadrilateral, then the only thing I can say is, well, that quadrilateral has four sides and it totals 360 degrees. That's it. All right. So let's go on to the very first quadrilateral we're going to talk about today. And that is this little guy up here in the corner, the kite. And we're going to get to introduce you to the rest of these as the videos progress. So a kite. Notice all the quadrilaterals we're going to study are convex. So we call the kite one of the oddballs of the family of quadrilaterals. The official definition is it is a quadrilateral with two distinct pair of equal adjacent sides. Okay, so let's break that down. Here's the little quadrilateral. I have no parallel sides. So none of my sides are parallel. However, I do have some special properties. I have two pair of consecutive Okay, so what does consecutive mean? Well, if you look at the definition, it means adjacent. And what did we say about adjacent? That means they're attached to one another. So let's look at our kite here and look at AB and BC. They are consecutive or adjacent sides. And those sides are equal. We say that they are congruent. Okay, so A, B, and B, C are consecutive equal sides. We also have A, D, so that was the first pair. Here are the second pair. So we have AB is congruent to BC and AD is congruent to CD. Okay, so that's what that means. Now, if I draw a line segment that connects the vertices where the congruent sides meet, okay, so what does that mean? Well, up here at B is where the congruent sides meet, and down here at D, so if I draw that diagonal, I draw a line segment in, that tells me then that it will bisect the angles at either side. So it bisects the angles at either end. No, don't remember what the word bisect means, Miss Evans. Okay, bisect means that this angle and this angle are congruent. So ABD is congruent to CBD. It also means that ADB is congruent to CDB. So those two angles are congruent. <clears throat> so now let's look at the two triangles that are formed. If the two angles are congruent and all of the sides, you've got congruent sides comparing each other, that means also then that angle A has to be congruent to angle C. Okay, so angle A is congruent to angle C and we have two equal triangles that are there. Okay, what else do we know? Well, we know that a kite has two diagonals. 
So we already drew one of them in. That was the vertical one as we're looking at this kite. This is the one that connects. Remember, AB is congruent. So it connects this two set, the vertice between these two congruent sides to the vertice down at these two congruent sides. And then we have another one that's going to connect the two congruent angles. When that happens, the diagonals create a 90 degree angle here in the middle. So in a kite, these sets of angles inside here are all 90 degrees. Now there's one other property. The diagonal connecting where the congruent sides meet, so in this case BD, bisects AC. So that means that this piece is congruent to this piece. Okay, we know all that because it's a kite. So those are a lot of properties I know to remember, but that's the properties of a kite. Okay, so now Let's go to one more thing, and that is, in a kite, how do I find the perimeter of the kite? Well, I add up all the side lengths. Remember, the perimeter is the area, is just the length if I were walking the whole way around. That's the perimeter. So I add A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A, and I get the perimeter of the kite. Well, what if I want the green area inside here? How do I find the area of the kite? Well, then I'm going to use the area formula. And that says that I take the diagonal number one. So I take the first diagonal. I multiply it times the length of the second diagonal. And I divide all of that by two. And that is the diagonal. That's how I find the area of a kite and it will always be in units. So if it's feet, it's feet squared. If it's inches, it's inches squared. So units squared. And you're always going to have to make sure that you put that on when you talk about area of something. Okay, so we're going to stop this video here because the next thing we're going to go into is, okay, so I know all this about a kite. Now what do I do with it? Um, so in the next video, we'll show you the math that's involved and what you're going to need to know for the rest of the course. So I will see you in the kite part two.